For I tell you, that unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. That's Matthew 5.20. I bring that up because obviously everybody's going to be talking about the assassination attempt on Trump. Yeah, there's some things that don't add up for me, how the Secret Service allowed that area on the roof to be unvetted or unguarded. Uh, there's a report in one of the first articles that came out that there was a guy and multiple witnesses that saw the gunner crab walking to that spot with a rifle and no one did anything until the shots went out and then they shot him immediately. So there's some things that don't add up. Most reports say that a bullet grazed his face. One says that a teleprompter was actually shot and the glass shard from that hit his face. I know it's supposedly it's a 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks. I find it very ironic that his last name is Crooks. Uh, but just graduated. Apparently he's a Republican, but he's donated money to a Democratic uh, left organization, like 15 bucks. I don't know. There's a lot of details that don't add up. It's healthy to ask questions about major world events like this because there are people who put on false flags to rally support and to accentuate a divide that is already there. So many political pundits. Heck, a lot of my family and friends were saying, well, that Trump just won the election. And I've heard people on both sides saying that if he wins the election, there's going to be chaos. And that if he doesn't win the election, there's going to be chaos. It's just a matter of which side is going to initiate that chaos, which ultimately could be a civil war followed by a world war. That's what the powers in this world want. I don't know what the truth of it all is. All I know is they're going to get the chaos that they want, and people are inflamed right now. But let me get to the quote, or the scripture from Matthew 520. People have been looking for a savior in this world, and that is the real danger here. That is what scares me. I've had multiple brothers in Christ this week say, if you don't vote for Trump, you're not a Christian. I'm like, brother, you know, sometimes I'll say it, sometimes I'm just thinking it, because I'm trying to do what we're all supposed to do, point people back to the cross. Back during Jesus' day, the Romans, they were the modern-day leftists. They were pagans, they were idolaters, they were living life, hedonistic lifestyles, and they loved their own gods, they, they served themselves. The Pharisees, they were, the, they were basically the political opposition to Rome. They held each other in check. But the Pharisees and the Hebrews, the Israelites at that time, were waiting for a Messiah. They were waiting for a Savior to conquer Rome, to put them in charge, to give them the power. They expected it in this world. Many still do to this day, those that rejected Christ. The thing is, the Messiah came, our Savior came, but he pointed us to his kingdom. So if you were walking with him, you were pointing people to his kingdom, knowing our kingdom is not of this world, and any arbitrary lines of land or territory on this earth, we were blessed to grow up in the freest nation, that the earth has ever seen, that this world has ever seen. And I'm grateful for that, and everybody that grew up here should be grateful for that. But with that great freedom, with that blessing of that freedom, comes a great cost. And to follow Christ is to give up these comforts and to point people to truth, and knowing that our Savior is in heaven waiting for us. We won't have a Savior here. So if we put all of our energy to fight for things in this country... Forgetting that our eternal security is already there, we are missing the point. It's the modern-day Romans and Pharisees is what I always say. And if Pontius Pilate or like Caiaphas, if they were opposing one another, or if Caesar versus Caiaphas, who would you vote for? People might say Caiaphas because it's the lesser of two evils. At least he stands for godly things, but he's full of pride. But a little bit of leaven leavens the whole loaf. And we are called to be the salt and to light for all of our deeds and good works to glorify the Father in heaven, to point people to Him, not to spend all of our time battling for what many people are considering a Savior because He's the lesser of two evils or He stands up for the right things. I'm not even sure that's always the case. But because the left is so far out there, it's easy to justify, you know, attaching our wagon to the right. 
but it's not right or left. It's right down the middle. It's where Christ is with grace and patience. Christ was willing to lay down his life, sacrificed, given up by his own people, by the conservatives, by the Caiaphases of the world, the Pharisees, because he was a threat to their power when they were waiting for what they deemed to be the eventual Messiah that would give them the power over Rome and the Pontius Pilate and the Caesars, the Romans. It's the same thing playing out right here. In this whole world stage, an event like this will just drum up so much support and fervor for those that are already putting their support behind Trump, making them ready to go to war, making them ready to cut the ears off of the Roman guards like they did for Jesus when they came for him with Judas. You know, Jesus said, those who live by the sword die by the sword. We need to be willing to give up everything to point people to the kingdom of heaven because that's where our residence is. It's not here. We're spiritual beings living a human experience. This world is fading away. We're here to plant seeds and point people to the one true Messiah, the one true Savior of the world who gave his blood, you know, who was pierced for our transgressions. They keep talking about his ear was pierced as far as Trump. And it's like, just that picture alone, it's like, I mean, that's pretty bold. They were just coming after your life. How does he trust in the Secret Service? There's just so many questions. But it's not even about that. It's about where are we putting our faith and our focus and who are we living for? What are we trying to protect? Are we trying to protect our status, our freedom, our things, our lifestyles in this world? Or are we trying to honor our God in heaven who gave it all for us so that we'd be willing to give it all to point others to the kingdom of heaven? I just leave you with that. It's going to be pretty chaotic, I'm sure, up until the elections. So we just got to focus on the one who died for us on the cross over 2,000 years ago, and that's Jesus. I pray this finds you well. God bless. See you tomorrow.